Hello, everyone. I'm Sun Kyung. The first session will begin now. Professor Dong Kyung Jang, who earned bachelor, master, and doctoral degrees from Seoul National University College of Medicine. He is currently a head of information strategy department from Samsung Seoul Hospital. He will lead this session as a chair. Let's give him a big round of applause. hear me? Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. Mm. It's a great pleasure to see our Odis Korea grow so rapidly. Honorably, we are here with Professor George Ripsack, who is the RDC chair. Let me introduce him. Uh, Professor Ripsack uh, is a Vivian Beaumont Allen Professor and Chair of Columbia University Department of Biomedical Informatics and he is a director of medical informatics services for New York Presbyterian Hospital. He serves as co-PI of RDC's coordinating center, which is based at Columbia University. Uh, now it's time to hear what vision and initiatives RDC has. Professor Ripse, please. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Chang. Thank you for the invitation, Dr. Park. Thank you all for coming. Um, and welcome to the Korean Healthcare Leadership. Congratulations on signing the MOU today, and congratulations on the book. And I'm honored to come and speak. So I'm going to do a little bit of an Odyssey uh, introduction and talk about our most recent work. Odyssey is an open science community, which is an effort to bring everyone around the world together to push forward our mission, which is shown here, to improve health by empowering a community to collaboratively generate evidence that promotes better health decisions and better care. We wrote this mission statement several years ago, and it still holds well. And the important thing about this mission statement is that our goal is to generate evidence. And everything else we do, whether it's a common data model or software or vocabulary, is in the service of this goal to generate evidence from around the world. Our values, uh, uh, to build a community, you need to have strong values. I'll just list them now. Innovation, reproducibility, community, collaboration, openness, and beneficence. So how do you create a worldwide open community, open science community, in the face of commercial uh, competition and academic competition? How do you bring everyone together? Well, this is how Odyssey unfolded. In 2007, a group of people had pushed for the creation of a law to create OMOP, Observational Medical Outcomes Partnership, which was a US government kind of organized, industry funded, about $30 million, effort to advance methodology. So not to do any research, not to generate evidence, just create methodology that would benefit pharmaceutical companies and researchers alike. So there were large resources, and the feeling was everyone wins. And in that five-year project, they created a common data model, vocabulary, methods, and most important, a core set of researchers. That project lasted five years. And on its uh, finishing, in 2014, the researchers reorganized and created the Odyssey, Observational Health Data Sciences and Informatics Initiative, which is a voluntary effort now to generate evidence. So for the first five years, we weren't allowed to answer questions. We were forbidden to try to answer a clinical question. Now, that has become our goal, to answer questions using the methodology that we developed in the first five years. It's coordinated from an academic medical center. That's where I am at Columbia University, but funded through different smaller grants from government and industry. We aligned it with community efforts. You may or may not have heard of OpenMRS, but one of the board members of that community joined our community to help us move forward to create an open one. <clears throat> And we continually, continually strive to engage the community. And now here we are, uh, five years later, more or less, and we're, we're able to generate evidence at large scale. And I'm going to go through one of these studies later on in my talk, but we've published in The Lancet, 
in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, <clears throat> Epilepsia, which is a neurology journal, and Philosophical Transactions A. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. This is our current community. You see a strong presence in Asia, Europe, and North America, and pulling in researchers from all the continents. We have 256 formal collaborators from six continents in 27 countries. We almost added the seventh continent, but that person left Antarctica, and so we didn't get his record in time. So we're looking for another Antarctica member to be, allow us to say that we're in all seven continents. 256 does not adequately represent uh, our size, though. If you look at our forum, almost 3,000 people participate in our forum, generating uh, tw almost 20,000 posts on many topics. So it's actually a large community that's growing quickly, and our, I think our formal representation of researchers lags the actual uh, uh, collaboration that we are seeing. So one thing we are is an international data network. How does Odyssey work? How can we grow so quickly? Well, you keep your data local. We address patient privacy, and different countries have different privacy laws. Germany is very strict, more strict than the US, for example. Uh, so you keep your data local. You convert it to our Odyssey OMOP common data model. We distribute questions around the world. You push a button to answer that question using the, so the uh, package we supply, send the data back to the central center, and then we together write papers. And that's why we now have papers with many authors, because everyone who contributes becomes an author on the paper. Here's our common data model, which is a deep information model, so that every aspect of medicine is represented in this figure uh, in, in, a, in a very detailed uh, approach including the vocabulary. So we draw from over 100 international vocabularies, um, shown graphically here, but with over 7 million concepts in our vocabulary. So we are going around the world collecting every way of, uh, let's see, there we are, every way of specifying all the medical concepts. In addition, we have a strong effort, oh, oh here we are. Uh, we have 133 different databases in the Odyssey network from 18 countries with over 369 million patient records from outside the U.S. In the U.S., we have mostly covered, so that's getting close to 300 million unique patients, which means together we have about 600 million unique patients in our network, which is about one-tenth of the world population. And if you can do a tenth of the world population, you can probably do the whole world population. And remember, this is a voluntary effort. So this was a big uh, accomplishment over the last five years. <clears throat> we work hard on data curation and data quality. We supply tools to help you build, visualize, and analyze cohorts, that is to carry out the research. All in the service of advancing science. So now let's talk about the science a little bit. In Odyssey, we characterize what we do in three categories. Clinical characterization, that's a matter of counting or tallying. How often does something happen around the world? How often do that, when people take penicillin, do they get uh, angioedema, say? How often does that happen? That's a nice one because it's easy to calculate. There's not a lot of assumptions. People understand the answer. For the important questions, we need to move one step further, and that's the second one up there, which is population level estimation or causality. And that's what we usually think of when we read a scientific paper. Does this drug cause that side effect, or does this drug have its effect on reducing heart attacks, say? And the third category is patient level prediction, which is for a given patient, giving everything we know about that patient, what's their risk? when they take a drug or get a procedure. So those are the three kinds of evidence that we generate. Um, one of the problems with using large databases to generate evidence is that um, uh, the public sees conflicting information. So here we have an example from two top journals, JAMA and British Medical Journal, answering the same question, published a month apart, 
using the same database with two different answers. One says, yes, esophageal uh, cancer is caused by bisphosphonate, and the other one says no. So the newspapers and the public don't know what to do. It's like uh, one year you hear that coffee causes cancer, and the next year you hear that coffee cures cancer. So there's a lot of um, contradictions within the evidence. And why does this come about? Well, because it's hard to do retrospective research. It's something called confounding, where if you don't do a randomized trial, you need to do an analysis that shows whether what you're seeing is just an association or is actually a cause. Um, shown here is a diagram, and Martine is going to go through this in greater detail. Uh, this is a diagram where I'm showing you uh, the, the eff well, let me use this. effect size by the standard error. And uh, what's here are studies that are not significant. What's here are studies that are significant. And as we see, when we study the literature, so this is a parse of 30,000 studies from the literature, and there's an uh, empty space here compared to these two ends. So you see here is where we find studies that show a positive result, that something causes or prevents something, and here it's empty. 85% of studies uh, are positive. What that means is that we're hiding. Uh, most of the studies that we submit get rejected because they don't have a positive result. So the ev literature is biased. How does Odyssey address this? In five ways. First, um, it does something called propensity score stratification, uh, which is a technique to reduce confounding and illuminate causes. But Odyssey does it differently. What Odyssey does, as opposed to other research efforts, is it actually tries to balance two groups on every variable. So the important point is, we'll take 60,000 things in the medical record and balance them between two groups when we compare two drugs. We consider the study a success if we can balance on every single one, all 60,000 variables. So when we have two groups, someone who took drug A and someone who took drug B, we make sure that they're all identical. Second thing we do is we don't trust that, so we do a second step. We take negative controls. We do things that we think don't get caused by the drug. So for example, we don't think that aspirin causes an ingrown nail. So that's a negative control. And if we run our study and it shows that that thing does, that aspirin causes an ingrown nail, then our study is um, erroneous in some way and we need to correct the study. And that's called a negative control and we do uh, um, between 50 and 100 negative controls. Next thing is we exploit our international database and we compare the result around the world to make sure it's consistent. If we find that a drug causes a side effect, we think that should, uh, we see if that drug is consistent around the world. Fourth, we publish everything we're going to do before we do it. We tell you what we're going to publish, what we're going to run, and then we make sure that that way you know if we're hiding any evidence or if we've changed anything. So that way we're not allowed to cheat on our studies. And fifth, we do many hypotheses and uh, mass so that um, we can see in general, if we're producing a lot of positive results that we don't believe, we look at our results and see if they make sense physiologically. And in these five ways, we believe we produce more reproducible evidence. And when we do this, our lines, are, our estimates, our, our research is more in line with expectations. So let me talk in detail about the Odyssey Legend hypertension study. The U.S. came out with a guideline for treating hypertension two years ago, and Europe came out with one one year ago. It, the executive summary is 56 pages, so it's an extensive document. Here's an example of the recommendation. Perhaps the main recommendation is that there are these classes of drugs that are called first-line agents that are used in the treatment of hypertension. And in, for each recommendation, they say what level of evidence they use to come up with that recommendation. Here's a listing of the first-line drugs. There are 29 of them listed on this slide, and there are 28 other drugs that are uh, second-line drugs listed in that guideline. If we look at the evidence shown schematically here, so around the perimeter, 
these dots represent, each one of these is a drug, a first or second line drug. An arc is whether there's evidence in the literature, a randomized trial telling you about the relation between those drugs. This guideline, what it does is it tells us which of these drugs we should use and which ones we shouldn't use first. What you want is evidence that says that, say, this drug is better than drag drug or not as good or is the same as it. But what we have is very sparse. There are only 40 clinical trials that inform the guideline, which has hundreds of recommendations. What that means is most of the guideline is expert opinion, not based on evidence when you come down to it. A lot of it is assumptions about that drugs within a class act similarly, or even sometimes drugs about similar classes act similarly. But that's an assumption that we make, and it would be nice if we had the actual evidence about this guideline. So Odyssey set out to fill in this circle with evidence to create more arcs so we know more about the drugs. We looked at 55 outcomes of interest. We looked at effectiveness, that is, does, it, does the drug reduce heart attacks, stroke, and heart failure? And then uh, safety signals that are common among antihypertensive drugs shown here. And as I mentioned earlier, we used negative controls, 76 negative controls, things that we think are not generally caused by hypertension drugs, to see if too many of these come out as a positive association. It makes us worry that our methods are not good. We used nine databases, claims and administrative databases. Um, we thank Asia University and Columbia University for their participation. Uh, we had two EHR data, three EHR databases, two from the U.S. and uh, one from Germany. As I said, we do these studies in large scale. So what we said is we're going to study all of these drugs. So I mentioned there's about 58 drugs. But remember, in hypertension, sometimes we use pairs of drugs. We treat hypertension as, as two drugs, okay? So we have 58 times 58, 57 combinations. And we did all head-to-head -head comparisons, so that's times 57 times 56 comparisons, times 55 hypotheses, and we had about 60 methods of doing it. So that's 60 to the sixth comparisons that we did, and that's shown here at the bottom in the um, 164 million uh, studies that we did. So we ran 164 million studies last year. Actually, it's not 164 million because some people, like people, don't usually take two beta blockers at the same time or two ACE inhibitors. So if you get rid of the ones people don't take, you actually end up with half a million studies on 10,000 uh, combinations. So we did this large-scale study to fill in that uh, circle that I showed earlier. And our results don't have, we publish everything. So there's no empty space here like on that previous diagram. Now. What I should mention is that Odyssey is heavy in diagnostics. So anytime we do a clinical trial, we have a long series of diagnostics to say, do we believe these results? Are these results re reproducible and reliable? So here's an example um, comparing furosemide to amlodipine. And you see these two groups. And I won't go into detail. This is a whole lecture in itself. Um, these two ends are very far separated. Looking at this, we think that this result, if we use this result, it won't be very generalizable. So this is a result that if we were publishing a paper, we would say, well, we're not sure if we trust this result. So we go through these extensive diagnostics and make sure when we make a conclusion uh, that we believe it. So let me show you some of what we found. Listed here are the first and second line hypertension drugs, and here are the same first and second line hypertension drugs. In this gray rectangle, we see that each of these squares in here, the color coding is if it's gray, it means the two drugs are the same. If it's purple, it means the drug on the bottom is better. And if it's green, it means the drug on the left is better. If you look at this gray rectangle, it's mostly gray uh, shaded uh, uh, squares. What that might means is that the US and European guideline, for the most part, is correct. In other words, there's not a lot of difference between first-line drugs. But if we look over here, which compares the first-line drugs to the second-line drugs, we see a lot of green. That means these guys are the better. The first-line drugs truly are better, and we found that. We confirm what the guideline says. The first-line drugs are better than the second-line drugs. And this square says the same thing. It just says the second-line are worse than the first, so that's symmetric. 
And this one just means among the second line drugs, some are better and some are worse. So that's the first order is the guideline is roughly correct, as far as we can tell. However, if we look a little bit deeper, if we look at the randomized, if we look at these five classes of drugs, among the randomized trials, it says there's no difference in myocardial infarction, heart attack. If we go to our study done in Odyssey called Legend, you'll see that we found a couple things. First of all, this line is beta blockers. Now, the US guideline says that beta blockers are second line. The European guideline says beta blockers are the first line. So let's look at Odyssey and see if it can answer the question. Well, we find that, in fact, beta blockers are not as good as, as these other classes, or this one says the same thing. So what we found in our studies that we have good evidence that beta blockers are inferior to the other first line classes, and the US guideline is probably a better guideline in that respect. But we have something that was not in either guideline over here, that ACE inhibitors appear to be not as good as thiazide and thiazide-like diuretics. And this is a, a, a finding that I'll go into more detail in a moment. There's a, one hypothesis that has been controversial. There are two diuretics, chlorthalidone and hydrochlorothiazide. And around the world, people use hydrochlorothiazide. That's generally the drug of choice. But researchers feel that chlorthalidone is superior. It lasts longer. There are f theoretical reasons why that might be preferred. There's no randomized trial yet comparing them. There's some indirect evidence that says chlorthalidone has better effective and the same safety. So we looked at that question. In our study of it, we find that, in fact, in our meta-analysis, that um, they are not different in effectiveness, that hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothalidone in real-world practice, one does not achieve a better effect, contrary to that indirect evidence that was there before. And furthermore, if you look at safety, hydrochlorothiazide, the commonly used drug, is actually much safer than chlorothalidone. So now there's a difference in potency between the two drugs. So we did a secondary analysis, and we said even if you take a low dose of chlorothalidone and a high dose of hydrochlorothiazide, hydrochlorothiazide is still the safer drug, even in the higher dose. There seems to be something there beyond just a potency. So our finding contradicts what's in the US recommendation as a side recommendation that says maybe chlorothalidone should be preferred we're actually uh, finding quite the opposite in our data. If we look, and I'll come back to the publications in a moment. So now if we look at that original circle, here's what we filled in. So we filled in a lot of the empty arcs, uh, putting evidence where there was no evidence under randomized trials so we can make reasonable decisions. And remember I said that Odyssey is an open effort. We share everything immediately. So all half million studies that we did were put on the internet immediately, and they're there for you to look at. Um, Data.odyssey.org has every result sitting there on the internet that you could look at right now from your iPhone. So what are the clinical lessons? First of all, the US and European guidelines are largely correct, although they're somewhat nonspecific. However, uh, different from the guidelines, thiazide diuretics surpass ACE inhibitors in effectiveness and safety and that was published two weeks ago in The Lancet and actually got a lot of press for that. It's an important finding because around the world, 48% of people who start treatment on hypertension start on ACE inhibitors. And according to our findings, they have a 15% greater chance of having heart attack, stroke, and heart failure from that. So that's an important finding. We also found that old fashion, the old calcium channel blockers, non-dihydropyridine uh, calcium channel blockers, are inferior to the classes um, which is true, but it's not a surprising result. The finding about hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothalidone, that's currently submitted to JAMA Internal Medicine and is in the second round of revisions, and we're hoping that gets published. We also have a paper on ACE inhibitors and ARBs, uh, angiotensin uh, uh, receptor blockers, with ARBs being more safe than the others, and the beta blocker paper and some other papers. So we're trying to get this evidence that we generate that's sitting on the internet into the literature. Uh, so from this part, let me just say it's feasible to create an enormous international research network. 
Sites will volunteer to run statistics. It's completely open. Uh, it's a concrete approach to address credibility crisis and that we are finally generating evidence. And let me just, in the final part, talk about our collaborations. First to mention, in the US, uh, the US F Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, does fund part of Odyssey. It's actually the biologics uh, section. So the, uh, the drug part it does a different network, but the biologics, the best program, uh, funds Odyssey, and that is some of the funding that I talked about earlier in my slides. The US All of Us Research Program, formerly known as the President's uh, Precision Medicine Initiative, which is aiming to recruit a million subjects and collect data, clinical data, for their phenotype and their genotype, which is hundreds of millions of dollars, that effort, that is also based on the Odyssey Common Data Model, and Columbia's part of the coordinating center to run that. The US eMERGE initiative, Electronic Medical Records and Genomics, is similarly based on the Odyssey OMOP Common Data Model. The European Health and Data Evidence Network, or EDEN, is also based on Odyssey, and uh, you'll see uh, more about that later on, uh, do, going towards harmonization, evidence, and building a community, and the uh, European Symposium. So if this, suppose, if this symposium uh, leaves you wanting more, you can next come in March to the European Symposium, which will be held in the UK. And of course, we have the, um, the project here in Korea, the National Common Data Model Project. Um, when we go around the, the world, uh, we brag about the Korean effort. Um, what you've accomplished here uh, to create a nationwide effort is, you know, a greater push forward than, say, we have in the U.S. or in any other country. The opportunity here is not just to create a data network, uh, which is an important part, 100 million people, but also to use Odyssey. Remember I talked about patient-level prediction to move forward on precision medicine and create a learning healthcare system. So I think with this signing today, you have the first step in moving forward, uh, being a leader in the world on the learning healthcare system, and I think you should support, uh, exploit that, which will help you both in medical care, commercially, and in research. So I congratulate you on that. I congratulate, uh, uh, thank you, Ray, for uh, pushing that effort forward and uh, being in a, an early, an initial uh, investigator in Odyssey. And uh, you've all joined the journey by coming here, but I invite you to continue on the journey. And uh, I look forward to the uh, progress that occurs in Korea. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ripsack, for your wonderful talk. Uh, I believe everybody clearly understood what Odyssey's initiative is. Uh, since this is the plenary session, uh, we do not entertain the question and answer. Thank okay. you. Uh, now let's move on the uh, next talk. If we have Odyssey Korea and Feedernet, there are Odyssey Europe and Eden Project in Europe. Let me introduce Professor Peter Rienbeck, who is the Odyssey Europe Chair. Uh, professor Peter Rienbeck is an Associate Professor of Health Data Science and is the lead of the HDS group at the Department of Medical Informatics of the Erasmus Medical Center, the Netherlands. Now we, he will talk on the EDEN project, uh, which means European Health Data Evidence Network. Professor Rizen, uh, uh, Rizenbeck, please. Thank you, thank you very much. It's really an honor to be here, and I was very happy when organizing the European Symposium that Professor Park was joining us in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, and I'm very happy to return that favor to him by being here. Um, my presentation is about a large European project called EDEN, and EDEN stands for uh, European Health Data and Evidence Network. The aim of the project is to build a large federated data network across Europe of data standardized to the OMOP Common Data Model. And the original uh, call text uh, was European Health Data Network, and we changed the acronym to EDEN European Health Data and Evidence Network 
First of all, because it really sounds better, Eden. It sounds like the paradise of data, uh, which we hope to realize. Um, but more importantly, actually, is that that second E refers to the, the creation of reliable evidence, which is really at the core of the project and is the main aim of the project. So for us, it's not really a medical informatics problem, standardizing the data and, and stop there, but it's really about uh, then delivering uh, reliable evidence for patient care and running studies on that federated data network. Um, the Eden Project falls under the Innovative Medicines Initiative. That's a very large uh, funding body uh, from the European Commission. It's actually, I think, the biggest one in the world. It has 3.3 billion euro of funding for a period of 2014 till 2020. Uh, and the Eden Project is one of the larger projects within that uh, initiative. It consists of 22 partners, and as all IMI projects, this consists both of public partners and pharmaceutical industry. So the goal here is really to, to have that collaboration between those two groups. Uh, and I think that's, that's very effective. And I, I must say I really appreciate that also in the, in the Eden Project. So there are 11 pharmaceutical companies involved and 11 public partners uh, led by Erasmus uh, Medical Center, uh, of which I'm the acad academic coordinator but also uh, University of Oxford, NICE, which is an HTA body in the UK. Um, and European Patient Forum is another good example of a very important uh, partner in the project because they represent European, European patient organizations uh, across, well, across Europe. Um, the point in Eden is all about generating reliable evidence, how to get from source data all the way to uh, reliable evidence. And we know there are many, many steps in between that, uh, those two uh, extremes. And we like to make that fully transparent and reproducible. Um, and of course, in this project, we decided to, to, to do that by standardizing the data to a common data model. Uh, if we do that, we can apply analytical tools on top of our data much easier uh, than, than is currently the case, especially in Europe where we have many, many different uh, data structures, like everyone, but also many different terminology systems that make our life pretty difficult. Um, and the standardization of the data really helps both with respect to the, the structure and the terminologies that have been uh, put in place by the Odyssey uh, community and Odyssey solution. So Eden is about that improving data interoperability, building other standardized analytics, of course, building a large data network, but finally, that data network will never be sustainable if we do not have a very large community around that, like you're also building here in, in, in Asia. So in our case, there was no question which common data model. Uh, to OMOP or not to OMOP, that's not the question. Uh, it is the, the choice, um, and because of the, the, the thing that I mentioned earlier, the standardization of both the structure and the vocabulary, but also because of the power of all the analytical tools that have been developed by the community uh, and we can, can build, uh, build on. So the Eden project started officially in November last year, but the kickoff meeting was in January and we did that in Rotterdam on a ship. Uh, and it was a very interesting meeting. What's nice, actually, in the Eden Project is that we did not start from scratch at all. We hit the ground running, and that's because of the Odyssey community and all the work that has been done over the last, uh, last years. Um, and we want to make all the data in Europe fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, and we work together uh, to make that a reality. So Eden is, is about harmonization of data. And the original call text mentioned that we had to map at least 100 million European patient records to the OMOP common data model. For me, that's not my goal in life. Uh, and I, I say that because I think it's much more important that we have a very good geographic spread across Europe, especially Eastern Europe is underrepresented, but also different types of databases. Uh, so the 100 million uh, level or the, that limit is nice, but we can easily get there, I think. We have to build federation tools, uh, extend the tools that have been developed in, in Odyssey, like Arachne, 
build that community and we're doing a good job there already in the first year where we had many, many meetings, uh, discussions with all stakeholders including the European Medicines Agency that uh, is helping out in, in building this federated network and provide advice. Education, also a very important topic, and I can highly recommend also the Korean chapter to invest strongly in education and training people. Because in, I think in general for Odyssey, this is the next step that we have to make. We already have a large number of people interested in Odyssey, but we need to make that, we need to scale up. And that is only possible if we build very good education material and make sure that everybody in the room really understands the power and the limitations of, of the CDM and all the analytical tools that we build. So we invest in that in Eden. I'll come back to that uh, in upcoming slides. Um, and finally, uh, we are looking into enabling outcomes-driven healthcare. Uh, also, the, the learning healthcare system is on top of our agenda to make that uh, a reality. The Eden project, like any other IMI project, is built up in work packages. And what's nice about this concept is that those work packages are led by two people one person from the public consortium, and the other person is coming from the pharmaceutical industry. So you always have that strong collaboration, and that's a, 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 a way of, of organizing your project that I really, really appreciate. Um, in Eden, we built the work packages around the concept of build, view, and drive, drive. So we need to build stuff. We need to build infrastructure to have technical solutions. But we also need to fuel that system with data and with people that are interested in the project, and finally drive it. So we need to have use cases, high impact use cases, to demonstrate uh, the power of the network. And the work packages in Eden are built around that. The basis is actually use cases. So drug utilization, effect estimation, these type of questions will drive the development of the tools and also the needs of certain databases. Um, what's very important also is we, need to have, we needed to have ways to get databases on board and build an ecosystem around that. Uh, and that is happening in Eden in a quite a unique way. So our budget of 28 million, uh, their part of that is reserved, 17 million euro is reserved for databases to map their data. So it's a fund. Uh, and that works very well. So data partners can apply for a grant out of the Eden budget uh, to map their data to the OMO common data model. Uh, and that's not done by themselves, but well, can be done, but it's, it's supported by a support network that we are setting up from uh, small to medium enterprises, small companies in Europe that we train and certify uh, for doing these type of mappings, mappings and supporting the ecosystem. And also this, co this concept I think is very interesting to think about. The more of these support uh, entities you have or the providers you have across the nation or, 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 or further than that, um, the more sustainable you are and the more uptake you will get of the CDM and support. And I think it's a very interesting concept to not focus on only one yeah. individual company that does that, but many more, so you can scale up easier and we need to scale up uh, to make this a success. These SMEs can be, will be linked to the data partners and work together on, in a kind of uh, optimization or a mapping cycle to map their data to the OMOP CDM and do all kind of quality control checks. So we had uh, multiple calls already in the first year of the project. Uh, the first SME call, the second SME call just finished uh, actually this week where we certified uh, a whole bunch of uh, SMEs. You may wonder what is in this for the SMEs? For, for them, um, it's very interesting to be at the beginning of this, this time. Uh, they can jump on the, on the train at this moment, get a lot of training, a lot of in, in, important input from the community, and these early adopters uh, will gain a competitive advantage across all the other SMEs that will jump in later. Um, we've seen a lot of interest from many SMEs to be part of this, and we did not even put a lot of effort in that uh, to, to contact them. Um, so in the first round of the, uh, the open call for SMEs, uh, there were 34 SMEs across Europe, many different countries, that wanted to be trained and certified to be able to map, da map data to the CDM. Uh, we have trained and certified 11 SMEs in two batches uh, in the pilot call, um, and uh, those will be used for, the, for mapping of the data. At the core of that was the development of an academy, the Eden Academy, which is an e-learning environment that contains 
uh, lectures to train people on, on doing the ETL steps. Um, I think this, this is a, a very good step forward for, for Eden, but for Odyssey in general, and we will invest much more effort into this in the upcoming period to make sure everybody can utilize that, that resource. Uh, it cont contains training on uh, the ETL, the OMCDM, the standardized vocabularies, based on the fantastic day, full day tutorials that Odyssey has been developing in the past years. But we added other stuff to that, like for example an exam, a one hour exam with many questions, where you really fully understand the CDM and the vocabularies. It's been supported by the virtual machines that are also used here at the tutorials, which is a very powerful way of, of exposing people to the tools without asking them to install them and train them using those, those tools in these individual courses. Uh, the, the, the list of courses will expand and we will focus of course also on the methods like patient error prediction, population level effect estimation, to put those in the academy uh, and allow people to, to be trained on that. For the certification, um, this was used. We had 80 uh, participants in the Eden Academy. And at the end of the certification was a full day or two day face to face meeting in, in Rotterdam where we continued to train them but also asked them to do a mapping of our source database in Rotterdam, the IPSI database, which is a GP database. And we, we tried to assess how well they are able to do this, uh, this conversion. This was a pilot run and we, we learned a lot from that and we definitely have to follow up with all these SMEs to make sure that when they do the first mapping that it's not only based on these initial assessments um, but we, we will of course be, be involved in that process as well and we want to build just like we're building in a community of data partners also a community of SMEs and, and service provider providers uh, that can come together and work together on improving the processes and the tools that we have for doing ETL. So we're thinking about hackathons, for example. Um, this probably means that my time is over. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go quickly. I, I love talking with music underneath it, so that's... <laughs> I, I, you better stop it. Um, I, I, I just want to... Uh, I have a couple more slides. The SME uh, pilot call, I talked about that. Um, I want to mention that also for the data partners there was a lot of interest um, across Europe and we have now finished the first round, the selection round, and we selected 20 different data sources across Europe. They will get funded by us. This is already more than 170 million patient records, so it's more than we had to do in the whole project. And I think this is just the beginning. We will have two of these each year for the upcoming four years. Um, I want to actually uh, quickly go to, uh, to, to one thing more. One thing that I have time. Oh, I have lots of time. Oh, what's the music for? Then I'll go back. Sorry. I have lots of time. Great. I thought it was already very short, but. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, so then I'll, I'll, I'll do, uh, spend a little bit of time. Uh, this is not so important. So the ongoing developments in Eden. I think it's important to mention what we are doing beside that standardization or the data partner and the SME calls. Uh, because there's much more happening and some of this may be very interesting also for this, for this community. First of all, we're building a service provider directory. So that is a directory that shows all the individual companies that we have certified, and there will be many more. It exposes them to the community. Um, so this is building business for these companies, and it may be of interest also here in, in, in South Korea. This is a way for them to expose them um, and to get, to get a business, get, get data partners interested and help them, to help them with their uh, data mappings. Beside that, there's also interest in, for some of these SMEs to be part of development of tools and building analytical uh, solutions on top of the CDM. So that's also a business opportunity for them. And some may want to be involved in training uh, and, be, uh, and coordinate some of the trainings or build trainings uh, or courses. The other thing that we are working on is a portal where we bring together all the individual uh, all the C tools, and it's called the Eden Portal. It also hosts a database catalog that we are working on. This is actually a kind of questionnaire that contains 
extrinsic metadata. So metadata is data about the database, not something we can measure on the data by running a tool like Achilles, but extrinsic metadata, meaning that that contains information like what's the governance procedure of the database, uh, some li links to publications, etc. And we are building up this, this questionnaire and this, this tool and improving it together with our stakeholders. So we are inviting, actually this week, or upcoming week, uh, the European Medicines Agency to also have a look at this and, f and give feedback to us. What would they like to see? What, what would they like to learn and know from all the databases in Europe before they initiate a study or, or do a feasibility uh, exercise? The aim here is to bring everything together. And uh, because I, my experience with Odyssey is that there is a lot of things out there. There are so many tools, there are so many information, and it's important to, to bring it under one roof, and especially the tools. So if we build something where you can log in and automatically log into all the individual tools and continue uh, and, and pro progress, make progress from there. The other thing that we are working on next to like the questionnaire, which is the extrinsic metadata, is also expose uh, intrinsic metadata. For example, things like an overview of patient time or in this case, the year of birth in databases. Uh, we are building something now that's a, it's a dashboard across the network. So you can, um, you can search for databases and create graphs and, for example, see for all the databases that, all the GP databases that we have in the network, what's the patient time that we have. Um, we are building like interactive dashboards that autom automatically are generated on the output of the Achilles tool that you can run against your database. And I think this is going to be an interesting uh, development. Uh, that ultimately should contain all data sources in the full global Odyssey community and not only in Eden. Um, and we like to get input on that and also like to collaborate with this community to see if we can build something together instead of all building the same thing and, and not uh, be interoperable on that level, which would be really a shame, I think. Other things that uh, are, are very interesting in Eden is that we already started creating evidence by having study-a-thons. And this is an example uh, of the Oxford study a thon where a group of people was brought together uh, for a small week to answer important clinical questions. And the power of these study a thons is that you need different disciplines to answer questions. You need different types of people. There's nobody in the room who has all the expertise, the clinical expertise, the data science expertise, the knowledge about the CDM, etc. You need to have a team. And uh, Odyssey has done this, and, and I was very happy that we also did this now in, in Eden, where we bring together these people and collaboratively produce the reliable evidence. And this resulted already in publications, like this one, which was in, in the Lancet Rheumatology, uh, which we're very proud of uh, in the project, and that creates a lot of exposure for us also to our, fund, to our funding body, uh, et cetera. But there's much more happening, and I, I absolutely have no time to go into all the details. I want to highlight a couple of things. So we've been working on the data quality tool together with, with Odyssey. Uh, we are looking at vocabulary expansions because there is a need of inclusion, inclusion of the European drugs in the vocabularies, and we will do that together with the European Medicines Agency. They shared with us their database of uh, all, the, uh, all the products on the European market, and we made progress in that and have now been able to map approximately 80% approximately of the codes uh, to, uh, to RxNorm and RxNorm extension and want to add the additional 20% as well in the upcoming period. We, work, we are working on tools to do quality control of the vocabularies, uh, but also methods research. Um, Beside the population level effect estimation, base level prediction, characterization, we're trying to combine effect estimation and prediction in a new, new R package called risk stratified estimation to test the heterogeneity of the treatment effect. And our aim is really to extend the legend study, for example, by looking also in, uh, in heterogeneity of treatment effect within all those different studies that, that was pre were presented by, uh, by George. Query library, another interesting thing that I invite you to have a look at, because that contains more than 200 queries, standardized queries against the CDM. Uh, and I have experienced that it can sometimes be quite difficult to think about a query to answer a specific question. And we should not have 100 people thinking about the same question and the same solution. We should have a library that contains those queries that we can all use, that we trust. Um, and I, I think that's a, a very valuable thing, and I invite also 
everybody in the room that is working on queries against the CDM to think about that and propose other queries that we are still missing in that, in that library. Uh, finally, we're also working on the ETL tools and we are happy that we are, uh, could take, take over some of this work for Martijn, who's uh, uh, is already very busy with other stuff. So we try to, to improve the ETL tools uh, and work together with everyone uh, to make those even better. So I think we are in a very exciting journey in, Ger in Europe, and I get a lot of energy out of this project. And, uh, and I'm sure that, that Professor Park gets the same energy from, from this community. Uh, it, it's really exciting to see how much interest there is in the OMO Common Data Model. Uh, there are many IMI projects being set up or already running that are using OMO Common Data Model as their core data model. And I'm involved in three other IMI projects that are all using OMO as their core data model. Um, regulators that are interested, uh, pharmaceutical industry through the, well, collaboration in our project, but I hope also by implementing CDM in their internal uh, processes. Um, and I see, I see a big, a big and very, very nice uh, uh, future for, for Odyssey in, in, in the European Union. Um, I'd like to end that uh, we have a European Odyssey uh, symposium again in March, uh, and I'd like to invite you uh, to have a look at the website, and there will be information about that to register there as well. Um, it will be in Oxford University, a very uh, interesting location, a very nice location to be in, and also to meet our European uh, colleagues. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, the Odyssey Network is expanding around the world uh, and the foundation for the international collaborative research using OMOP CDM is becoming really stronger. Uh, now I'm going to end this session. Thank you. <laughs>